Welcome to Live Devotions. Thank you for joining me today. Be saved is the title of this devotion. You know, we all need saving. All of us, either from the pew or the gutter, we all need to be saved. My father in 1942, I think it was, was working in Brooklyn, New York. And he was on his way to work. He was working in a Jewish restaurant. And as he was working, walking down the streets, he saw in the gutter this man laying there sleeping in his drunkenness, cuddling an empty bottle of alcohol. And as he walked past that man and looked at him, the Spirit of the Lord came upon my father so strong that he fell upon his knees and began weeping and weeping. And God spoke to him and said, John, do you know you are no better than him? And instantly my father's heart was filled by Jesus with his love for precious souls, for sinners. You see, the Bible says that Jesus came into the world to save sinners. The Apostle Paul says, I, who am the chief of all sinners, I am the greatest sinner of them all. In me, God chose to show his mercy to use me as an example of how gracious he is with even the worst of sinners that they too may know they can be saved through Jesus. And Paul really knew that he was an example of God's love for sinners. And we all are. We forget that sometimes, but we all are. And it's good to remember not how bad we used to be, but how good God's been. And here in Acts chapter 2, Peter is standing in the great city of Jerusalem that had so turned its back against God by crucifying his son. And here the apostle Peter shouts out, he says, with many other words, he testified and exhorted to them saying, be saved from this perverse generation. I mean, he was shouting it out, be saved. <laughs> and that voice came into the heart of thousands of men standing there and 3,000 of them bowed the knees before Christ and surrendered their lives to him. And you know, the scripture says here in 1 Timothy, this is good, chapter 2, verse 3, and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved, who desires all men to be saved. That statement right there blows away the argument that some are destined to be saved and some are not. No, God wants all men to be saved. I know you can bring up this scripture, that scripture to create the argument. No, Jesus came into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. John chapter 3 verse 15 and 16. And here he says he desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Jesus gave himself a ransom for all. In other words, he was the payment of all our sins. Oh, I'm so grateful for Jesus. I'm so grateful for his immeasurable love. <laughs> I want you to see something that is quite powerful here in Matthew chapter 22, please. Jesus is speaking this parable. And Jesus answered chapter 22, verse 1 of Matthew, and spoke to them again by parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding and they were not willing to come. Again, he sent out other servants saying, tell those who are invited, see, I have prepared my dinner and my oxen and fatted cattle are killed and all things are ready. Come to the wedding and they made light of it. Went their ways, one to his own farm, another to his business, uh, 
and the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully, and even killed them. <laughs> but when the king heard about it, he was furious and sent out his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned their cities. You see the reason why many times wars, not always, is because men need to wake up and realize that we need a savior. I believe that many times, folks, trouble is the dinner bell of God's kingdom to say, come, all you have elated and troubled and overwhelmed, come to me. You see, I'm not saying that every war is caused by the Lord. No, we know that, that there are many wars that come there because of the strivings of sin and the strivings of man. But in the middle of all of these things, we can all turn to the Lord. We can turn to God in the middle of these things, in the middle of trouble. If you read Psalm 107, look at it. Look at Psalm 107, please. Look at Psalm 107. Here it is. Mm. They wandered in the wilderness, verse 4, and in the desolate way, they found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses and led them forth by his right hand, that they might go to the city for a dwelling place. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for the wonderful works to the children of man, for he satisfies the longing souls and fills the hungry soul with goodness. Again, they sat in darkness, in the shadow of death, bound in affliction and irons, because they had rebelled against the words of the Lord and despised his counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their hearts with labor. They fell down. There was none to help them. So they cried out to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them out of their distresses. Oh, that man would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of man, for he's broken the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron in two and on and on and on. You read it, then next part is about people that are suffering illness. Oh yes, as we in our illness cry out to the Lord, He will heal them. He sent His word and healed them, verse 20, and delivered them from their destruction. Oh, thank you, Lord, that as we call upon your name, you will not fail to see us through to maintain our well-being and to bring us into full health again. Thank you, Lord, that we will never cease to look to you and to hold fast to you and to believe upon your goodness and mercy. If it would not have been the Lord, I would have been consumed a long time ago. But the Lord has helped me and upheld me and strengthened me. I really believe, dear friends, in the saving grace of God is more than just being saved from hell to heaven. It is living every day by the greatness of His goodness and mercy in our daily lives. I tell you, I need the saving mercies of the Lord for my every breath, for my every well-being and health and strength. I need it for the stability of my marriage, for the grace upon my children and children's children, for all the precious people in the church, in the community, county, in the world. I believe in the saving grace, but listen to this. They were invited, but they didn't respond. They were too busy at work. They were too busy in this. They didn't respond. They neglected, as Hebrew says, so great a salvation. And then look what began to happen to invoke them to jealousy. It says that the king, when he heard about it, was so upset and he said to his servants, those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore go into the highways, as many as you find uh, invite to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. And the Lord Jesus gives this parable, and he says there, you know, Many are called, but few are chosen. In other words, many that were called, they didn't respond. They neglected the salvation, but he went out to anybody who would come, anybody. In other words, salvation is for you. 
I know that sometimes we kind of go, yeah, I haven't felt anything. I haven't seen anything. I, I, I don't know anymore. But the Lord says, keep responding. Don't neglect so great a salvation. You will see the grace of it. You will. Go with me to Luke chapter 19, verse 1. Luke 19, verse 1. You will see it. God's mercies will never fail to show themselves strong on those uh, uh, on behalf of those whose hearts turn to Him and are loyal to Him. I love Jesus, you know. Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but he could not because of the crowd, for he was a short stature. So he ran ahead, climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he saw him and he said to him, Zacchaeus, do you see Jesus knows us? Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. <laughs> the most unlikely person would be Zacchaeus. There were so many who thought they were worthy of the Lord. Zacchaeus knew he wasn't worthy. Don't always think that you deserve what God has for you. Just know that he gives it because he is good and his mercies never fail. That is an important balance in life. I got to live. I got to live worthy of his name. I've got to live to the praise and glory of his name. And yet it's all mercy and grace and all mercy and grace. And so he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, 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 I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I will restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him today, salvation has come to this house because he also is the son of Abraham. And then look what the Lord says. The son of man has not come to the son, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. Oh, the joy of heaven was so great because look when Jesus came to this precious man, precious in the sight of God, sinners are precious in the sight of God, his heart turned. Salvation came and that salvation was expressed by his generosity and by his son's selfish actions. I believe God can turn people's hearts around. Zacchaeus was known for being somebody who took more than he should have, and somebody who, who, who was an extortionist. But Jesus turned him, that's salvation. I believe the turning of Jesus is here. Jesus can take somebody full of wrath and anger and make them humble and meek and gentle. Jesus can make somebody who steals and makes them the most generous person. Jesus can take a blasphemer and make them meek and gracious of tongue. Jesus can take the person who's opposite to him and really hard to bear and make them gentle and forbearing and good. Jesus is an amazing savior and he never ceases to be that savior. That's why you can believe if it hasn't happened yet. Jesus, I have no one to call upon you but you. You said whoever calls upon your name shall be saved. And they looked to you and were radiant and were not ashamed. Whenever you look to Jesus, you will not be disappointed. He's an amazing savior. And this counts for us as much as it does for anybody else. There is absolutely nobody in the heaven given to us by which we must be saved with Jesus. And he will never fail to be who he is, our savior. I want to encourage you. Maybe you're like my mama who was in such pain and my father because I was so rebellious and I was causing so much shame to them and to my father's work by the way I was behaving, but they didn't give up. 
despite the shame I caused, despite the pain I caused. My mom and dad didn't give up. They stayed in faith because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And they kept praying and believing. And here I am today serving the Lord. And I'm a testimony of what He will do for your children and your children's children. So believe, Jesus has come to seek and save the lost and keep bringing your children and your children's children and your neighbors and your adversaries and your opponents and anybody to Jesus and say, Lord, save them, I pray. Save them, I pray, and He will. Amen. Have a good day.